Since we know that our eyes auto calibrate to make us feel like it has the entire tonal range from white to black, we really have to train our eyes to see when that's not happening. So look at this image and ask yourself, is it a low contrast image or a high contrast image? If it's a high contrast image, it has to have pure blacks, lots of dark tones, pure white, lots of white tones, very few mid grays. A low contrast image typically has lots of middle tones, but it either has no rich blacks or it has no rich whites, or both. So I'm going to hit Command or Control L to bring up a Levels dialog box. And based on the histogram, it has neither. It has no blacks or this whole area of dark tones. And this side of the histogram, it has no whites and no highlight areas. So if you're going to stay in Photoshop, there's four ways to fix this. Good, better, best, and most awesome. I'm gonna show you all three because... Wait a minute, you just said there are four ways. Good, better, best, most awesome. And you're just gonna show three of the ways? Come on, what's going on here? Depending on the image and what you need, if you're staying inside of Photoshop, there's four basic ways to fix the tonal contrast of an image. And they're kind of rated from good, better, best to most awesome. And you can use this in either the levels or the curves dialog box or adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna use the levels adjustment layer. I get the same histogram. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the black pointer and drag it to the base of the mountain. Now, if I hold down the Alt or Option key at the same time, it'll show me where things are starting to clip to black. And currently, I don't even have pure black. Getting close, getting closer. I'm inside the mountain now. So obviously the blue channel is topped out and that's gonna be pretty dark. That's how far into it I have to go to get start getting pure black to show up. So I'll let that go. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the highlight side. I'm gonna click and drag it to the base of the mountain. And again, I can hold down the Alt or Option key to see what's, okay, so I definitely have some white specular highlights occurring, so that's fine. Whenever you adjust the black and or the white slider, the mid-tone slider auto calibrates to be exactly between them. So for me, I might want to open up my mid-tones a bit by grabbing the mid-tone slider and just pulling it open. Not too much, I don't wanna blow out the, the mid-tone highlight areas, but just to make it a bit brighter. So that's the good way to fix it. And it's good because it's pretty quick and you kinda of see what you get. Now let's do it with a bit more precision. Here's the base image. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. And this time, instead of working on the total RGB histogram, I'm gonna go in per color channel. So I'll go to the red and I'll do the same thing. I'll drag it into the base of the mountain, go to the green, drag that color channel to the base of the mountain and go to the blue and drag that to the base of the mountain for both the shadow and highlight sliders. And then I'll go back to RGB to see if I want to brighten up just those midtones a touch. So this is a really nice tonal adjustment, giving us the full tonal range from rich blacks to rich whites with a full range of tones in between, making it a more interesting image. This is before and this is with the appropriate contrast. So some images benefit from this individual, very precise way to adjust each individual color channel because there are some images where the individual color channels histograms are actually quite different. Here they were fairly similar. They were still different, but, but they were similar. But some of them are so skewed one way or the other, this is really helpful if you encounter that situation. So this is the better way to nice. do it for more accurate results if production and speed are not an issue. So here's the original original base image. And let me show you the best way. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. And instead of dragging sliders, I'm going to come over here and just click my black point eyedropper. And I'm going to click on what I think should be pure black. So I'll find a recess, a shadow area, like, you know, anything over here, anything in here would be pure black. I could, since this is my most important subject, although it is kind of a geographic portrait, a location-based portrait, you know, this is a mechanic who works on bikes. It sets the scale, tells the story of who he is. I'd probably reset my point somewhere on him. So I'd say way, way down here, somewhere over here is probably pure black. Same with right up in here. So I'll click there. That reset my black point in all of my individual color channel sliders. It automatically went inside each the red, green, and blue channel and stretched out the histogram recalibrating to pure. So you see where I'm going with this. Now I'll grab the highlight slider and I'll click on, you know, one of these specular highlights that recalibrated all of the color channels, each the RGB color channels to this nice tonal range. And now I can just kind of grab my mid-tone slider and still adjust to taste if I want to make it a darker, moodier portrait or more of a brighter portrait. 
I can control that directly with my midtone or my gamma slider. This is the best way. Nice. So go back to the original file, and now we can see that it's pretty flat right off the bat. Now let me show you the, the most awesome way to do this, where it gives you precision and speed. Essentially, you're just going to add a levels adjustment layer, and a lot of people shy away from the auto calibration. But remember, there are like a thousand scientists and mathematicians writing the algorithms for Photoshop that have been pretty carefully created and conceived. So auto, unlike the old days, auto tends to do a pretty good job. So I'm just going to click auto, see what it does. It does a pretty decent job. Notice it doesn't pull it all the way to the base of the mountain. It didn't give me that really rich black and that really rich white, but it did what it thought it could do. So I'm going to undo that by just deleting the layer. I'll add the adjustment layer again. Now watch this. If I click on these lines, these little dialogue lines here, it opens up a box just outside of the viewing area that's so important. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make my Photoshop smaller so that you can see it. So I'll click on these dialogue lines, which means there's some hidden features. And I'll go down to auto options. And under auto options, this is the default, enhance brightness and contrast. But what I want to do is I want to enhance the per channel contrast, which is the same thing we did when we poked into each individual color channel, adjusting both the shadow and the highlight sliders. It sets a clipping point, making sure that you have exactly pure black, exactly pure white. And if I click save as defaults, this will automatically happen. That really intensive RGB shadow and highlight slider adjustment for each color channel, Auto happens just by clicking auto from now on. So I'll, I'll delete this. I'll add a levels adjustment layer. And we saw what happened before. It didn't quite give it as rich of a look. Watch this. Auto. Boom. Holy Batman. That is most awesome. All the work is done. The heavy lifting is done. I can quickly just open up my midtones because I like it to be a bit more bright. And that is by far the most awesome way if accuracy and speed are your main goals, which in Photoshop, why would you not want to do things more efficiently and quicker so you can spend more time in Photoshop having fun? Or if you're a working professional, you can get your work out quicker. So let's do the same thing with this image. So if I hit Command or Control L, what we thought initially, just by looking at it, obviously there's some clipped highlights because the histogram is running up the right wall. I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and, and probably it's gonna be those, yeah, just the background where the sun is coming through the trees. But notice all of these dark tones, everything from black all the way to this level of dark gray is missing from this image. Now, sometimes a high key image is cheated by making it kind of a, a lower contrast shot by getting rid of the blacks, essentially by overexposing. We know we can add a levels adjustment layer, pull this black point slider over to get pure black, slide my midtones open to still have it that brighter fill, and I'm good to go right? But instead, I'll start again with the base layer, click the levels adjustment layer, and then I'll click auto because I've already set this to auto set the black and white points per red, green, and blue channel, giving me a very accurate and quick adjustment. And then I just need to open up my midtones a touch, maybe pull down my highlights just a touch so they're not glaring. And I've already fixed this image really quickly. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Go home. Yes! That's awesome! What? You just took one in the jugular, man! Huh. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, I did! Is this bad? Is this bad? You should pull that out! That shit is not cool! Pull that out!